record. And hello, my friends. It's Heather. This is the Back to Me podcast. It's another beautiful, awesome day in podcast land anyway. And I hope you are having an excellent day. And we are talking to more amazing people today. Well, one amazing person who's part of the amazing collective of people that I get to talk to. Right, Karen? Yeah. <laughs> so today is Karen Deloach. And did I say that right? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, cool. Creativity specialist is what I called you, but um, art as self therapy. And you know, I'm already on that bandwagon 100%. And I was reading some of the information that you were sharing about some of your students. So we're going to go to that for sure. But first, um, how did you become down this road of creativity specialist? Like, what led you to? using art as therapy? Well, that's a great question. And I, I don't know if I can answer it in 25 words or less, but <laughs> you got as many as you want. <laughs> I've always been creative. I'm part of a creative family. And my father's got that Irish storyteller in him. And I grew up with theater and uh, art was just something fun to do as a child. And one of my mom's stories is the paper just was never big enough. And I ended up drawing and painting on the walls, which of course got me in big trouble. Uh, but she didn't realize that someday some people were going to pay me to paint on their walls. <laughs> I was right? painting murals. So <laughs> you never know. But, you know, that's one of the things I talk about with my clients is, you know, what did you enjoy before you were seven or eight? You know, what what kinds of things were fun to you? Because that's a key to, you know, really how to use and engage our right brain, which has become a passion of mine since I started understanding what was happening. Because, you know, as an artist and, and a theater person and a, a filmmaker and then an art teacher and film teacher, you see things happen and, and you see the results. But since I've been investigating the neuroscience behind it, I've gotten even more excited. It's like, oh, yeah, I've seen it in action. And now I get to see it have scientific proof that that shows that art truly is self-therapy and you can get wellness through creativity, even if you don't identify as an artist. Right. So I've always had this drive for the arts. Um, my grandfather was a, a, a violinist for the New York Philharmonic Orchestra. So there was music in my mom's family and our sons are all musicians and artists. It's just really a, a kind of a very right brain family <laughs> and, and all kinds of art. And that's the thing is I don't know anybody that just does one thing. You, they'll say, well, I paint, but I also like to draw and I like to sculpt and I like to act. And I, you know, so it's very hard to just nail it down. But what happens, you know, scientifically is what's gotten me excited because, you know, science, we have a culture. And this is one example. You ask a room of five and six year olds, you know, do you like to color? Do you like to paint? Do you like to dance? Do you like to sing? Do you like to play in the playground? Do you like to throw and catch balls? Yes, 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 yes. But you ask a room of 15, 16 year olds, maybe 10% say yes. So I'm like, what happens in that 10 years that squashes? Because half our brain, right, is creative. We've right. got our our left side that that is logical and reasonable and chronological and memorization and very, very important, right? And that's all measurable and easy to test. And that's what generally our school systems are oriented towards, to the detriment of what happens in the right brain, the right brain that has creativity, imagination, um, intuitiveness, inventiveness, um, coloring outside the lines. That's a lot harder to to find a way to measure and so we don't get it and it even at, at the least gets trivialized in our school systems um and and very very often because it is the sensitive side of our mind people get hurt well you know why'd you call you you can't color at all or you can't draw or you can't sing and those those words we i call them left brain bully words that just kind of eat at us convince us and i know that happened to me when i was in art school and i i really struggled because i was interested in all these different ways and i still took theater but in but in art i was doing really well in drawing and sculpture but my major was painting. I really wanted to paint. And my teachers, unfortunately, used four-letter words to describe my painting. 
<laughs> and I even went to four different painting classes to see if I could get a different opinion. Actually, what I was looking for was was better skill development because I wanted to paint naturalistically, not abstract expression, which these teachers came from and were really right. looking for. And I, I love people. I love places. I wanted to to make paintings about them. But I became convinced my right brain heard you can't paint. You're terrible and go into sculpture. And I didn't finish a painting for almost 20 years. I'm Isn't not, that I'm not crazy? Convinced. Those words ate at my confidence, ate at my, you know, I, I came into agreement with them is really what happened. Right. Now, and it's so there. strange. <laughs> right. I find it. I mean, I, I, to some degree, I understand it, that we feel the need to measure everything. <laughs> but what? You don't have to measure everything, you know. Um, we don't criticize trees for the direction that they grow, generally. Some people might. But I'm just, you're reminding me of my, my husband didn't draw for probably 50, maybe longer years. Because in art class, in school, they, he, think he well he failed art they told him he needed to he wanted they, the teachers like draw a tree and he wanted to draw rocket ships <laughs> <laughs> so you know it's like no you don't pass well let the poor kid draw what they want to draw right and it is interesting depending on what teachers you get I had a painting teacher who is a high realist teacher and so I I, I do consider myself a painter I know not everybody considers himself an artist, but it took me a long time to undo the high realism, you know, because you are so influenced by those early teachers in your life. And, and you can get the opposite where I'm not good. I believed I wasn't good enough. And for you, it's like perfectionism, you know, yeah. paralyzed by perfectionism. Yes. Because, you know, both both wings are are out of order when, when we got to build our skills, you know, and most of us call ourselves practicing artists. You know, the joke is we're always practicing because we always want to try new things, which we don't know how to do well. And so perfectionism can truly paralyze uh, an artist or musician, singer, all kinds of different ways that, you know, perfectionism can hurt us or writers because they tell you don't edit while you're writing. I've got three books and have three more in the pipeline. So I know about, being so tempted to always be editing and never make progress. And you're, you know, kind of like fighting your own, your own creative world, which is right. shutting down the left brain sometimes and letting the right brain have its way and develop it. Let it come up. It's not a, it's not a matter of not using our left brain. It's a matter of creating these neural pathway connections uh, between left and right brain. And that's bring, that means that the right brain may need healing. It may need training. It may need encouragement, you know, listening to what it's trying to tell us. You know, people say, I, you know, from the gut, from the gut, but where does that gut communicate to? It communicates right. to our right brain. That's where we're getting the ideas. They just like pop. Now, here's an example. And, you know, again, I don't know who these scientists are that do these studies, but they were studying people that sing in the shower. Do you like to sing in the shower? I sing in the car, not in the shower. <laughs> yeah. Nobody else is around, right? <laughs> you know what happens when you're singing in the shower? Now, this is kind of cool. So you're rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, you know, scrubbing in the tub. And while you're singing your favorite tune or song, you get out and you're feeling good and squeaky clean. And some idea pops in your mind. Maybe it's a solution to something that was puzzling you. And you don't, you don't credit that to singing in the shower, but there is a direct correlation between letting that left brain rest and engaging the right brain and those neural pathways connect and create a new idea. It's awesome. That's just one way, simple ways to really engage ourselves with our right brain. Well, and your right brain, because it's not linear, can make those connections that would not seem necessarily logical at the time, right? It can just make these pinging connections. Oh, this, 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 and this. And you think, oh, wow, that's brilliant. But it, um, I did, I read a book called um, Be More, Do, Do Less, Be More. And it was talking about how you have to let that um, logical part of your brain <clears throat> take a, take a coffee break. <laughs> <laughs> just and exactly. daydream and play and do whatever you want for you know how, 
And it is true. And you don't even, I don't even have to sing in the shower. That's where ideas come, right? It's just because you're not <laughs> thinking awesome. about anything. Mm -hmm. You're just, mm -hmm. just hanging out. And mm -hmm. I was, I wanted to say, um, I think some people consider if they call themselves an artist, they have to be earning money at it. And it's like, but that's not what art's about. You know, <laughs> I feel like more people would be comfortable saying, yes, I do this or I do this if they didn't put that pressure of, but um, it's not my career. I just do it for fun. So they don't consider it in a, in a, not that it's a serious thing, but in a serious aspect, like in the serious things it can do to help. Right. So, I mean, art is therapy for so many things, but I think if we took the pressure off is that it has to perform in some way. Does that make well, sense? Well, I think only only your tax account needs to know <laughs> if you're making a living <laughs> off of it. You know, it's it's really, truly not the measure of success. I mean, otherwise, could we call Van Gogh a success? Because for, you know, two dec decades as he painted and drew and sculpted, did he sold one painting. Yeah. Now his paintings are for $50 million and above. But was he a failure? And, you know, he certainly, certainly had mental uh, struggles to believe he was good enough because of those financial struggles. He had a brother that believed in him. Uh, but uh, Teo, but, you know, the, the reality is success. Yeah, because guess where success measured by money is from? The left brain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that left bossy, brain. bossy pants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. that yeah, bossy that pants on the left saying get to work yeah, <laughs> saying, you're not a success you didn't make it. and i've i mean we've all i don't know any artists that haven't struggled with that or, or actors or you know what if you don't find joy in the journey then you're not gonna you're not gonna keep with it you're not gonna stay with it and and it can manifest in so many different ways it's not just painting drawing and sculpture you know it, it, there's many 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 ways to be creative what if you like cooking and you tweak recipes hello that's engaging your right brain and left brain. The left brain's doing the do. The right brain's coming up with ideas. Well, we really like cinnamon. delicious. Let's try that. Yes. <laughs> it's a delicious way to be creative. Or how about this one? This one's really simple. My mom and I did this yesterday. We had a sunny day in winter and we took a walk and a stroll. And this was not, you know, Fitbit counting your steps, right? Or being aerobic. This was just I don't know, I, I think at least six or seven people walking their dogs, uh, you know, chatting, seeing the blue skies with, cl with without clouds, you know, smelling the daffodils are starting to come up and whatever yeah. is around, just enjoying the crispness in the air, but being all bundled up and not cold. That releases again that pressure that builds the 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 that builds in your in your um left brain and lets the right brain and i had an idea and i said you know i could just do this and mom said look you're you're exercising exactly what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> Right? She's heard me on my podcast and <laughs> she really talk about this. <laughs> That's okay, awesome. I'm practicing what I preach. <laughs> exactly. And I think a lot of us um when we're trying to help people in coaching or whatever, it's stuff that we've figured out ourselves. And we went, oh my gosh, what do you mean? Not everybody's figured this out yet. So let me help them. <laughs> and you've written some books. Yeah. Yep. I have three books. A couple of them are on Amazon. Um, I teach college art and we're in rural South Carolina. And I realized that this class wasn't working with the textbooks that they had. I wanted to really make an impact on my students' lives. I only had them for one course. They were doing something else with their life. But for this one class, I could introduce them to the world of Western art. I could stir up their own creativity. I could I could help them find local artists who maybe they could relate to with the same kinds of experiences. So um, I rewrote the textbook, 2020, and we all came home, right? Um I taught, still taught online, but I spent that time. A publisher approached me. I have 1,800 images. It's called Art History Appreciation. And cool. in it, in it, I also have hands-on through my other book, How to Draw. And so those, those I was putting into effect and really, because most art history books are written by art historians who, who I'm sure love art. But it's guess what side of the brain it's coming from. Dun, 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 dun. Dates oh, and oh. times and boring. 
<laughs> I took art when history. When I hear students tell me, oh, art was the most boring class. I slept through the slideshows. I want to cry. It's so exciting when you hear people's stories and you find out where they came from. And, you know, you, you, you just find some way to identify. Because most people can tell you some music they love, but they may not be able to tell you any art. Or maybe they don't have art on their walls because they don't even right. know what to do. And I also have them go to museums. Um, I live near Charleston, South Carolina, which is a beautiful place for, for looking at art. And, and a lot of it is local. We have a beautiful countryside um, right along the coastline. And we have lots of, lots of, um, of marsh, marshlands and beautiful scenery. And, you know, we have a lot of artists that can, that can show that kind of work. And so my students, you know, I, I require, not require my, they get to not take the final quiz if they go to a gallery museum. So that's kind of part of my philosophy of of trying to enjoy it and, and enhance your life by enjoying this part of of our our lives. We were we were given half a brain for creativity. And if we're not being creative 15 to 20 minutes every day, we're not living as fulfilling, joyful, happy life that we could because just in a 15 minute walk with my mom we had happiness that serotonin is released that's what the that's what the scientists are telling me it actually releases serotonin that's why on facebook everybody posts babies and puppies and kittens because <laughs> they make you happy you know they do Cat they take over the internet <laughs> you know and the, and the healing aspect you know, and this is what I was sharing with you before about mm -hmm. David, one of my my young students. You, you know, he he was a homeschooled young man because he had ADHD and dyslexia. So academics were torture for him. Right. And his mom brought him to my studio and he became really, really good artistically in a very short amount of time. He loved it. He thrived in it, sculpture in particular. Uh, but he could draw, he could paint. We did batik that eventually, um, because he was able to do well enough to graduate from high school, uh, he won first place grand prize in a youth competition. And then just three months later, had a brain infection that caused a stroke and paralyzed him on the right side of his body. Whoa. Yes. And after four months rehab in, in the hospital, he still couldn't communicate verbally. He couldn't walk very well. And he, and his right hand was kind of curling up to not um, be functional. So as soon as he got out, his mama brought him back to the studio. And as depressed as he was, we said, you know what, David, you got a left hand that works just great. And in a short amount of time, again, he was drawing and writing with his left hand. And in a, in a, in a short while later, he was starting to communicate verbally. So I get a call from his neurosurgeon. He said, I've never called somebody's art teacher before. <laughs> like, you know, I'm going to lower myself to talk to you. As well, I'm not a therapist, I'm an artist. And, and he said, what are you doing with David? Because not only, I mean, he's stronger with his weak hand than I am, and I'm a surgeon, and he's starting to have mental repair being being done, and he's starting to talk and walk, and he's doing better. He says, I'm doing the medical stuff, but he's doing things miraculously better. So I knew that I didn't understand at the time what was going on, but it was very evident to me that art had not only encouraged him in academics when he was struggling with those infirmities, but he, you know, was able to make neural connections through the arts in school, but then to recover from such a traumatic uh, brain injury. And I've seen him recently. He can talk almost perfectly. He, he walks almost completely without a limp. His, his right hand is still weak, but he could still write and draw and do everything and communicates right. great. He has a plastic skull. I mean, I mean, this is a dramatic, dramatic change. And I have another, another um, woman who um, was so good in the studio. She had brought her, her children. And I, I encouraged, always encouraged the moms and mostly moms, dads to, to do it too. Cause you know, well, who knows? And she was very talented. And then she got a, a, a late stage breast cancer diagnosis oh. given like six months uh, expectancy. And was doing all the radiation chemo. And I, I had a big, big art project that I was preparing for that was in nine months. It was a whole room installation using porcelain. Uh, it's called Taste and Sweet, see, Taste and See Sweet Shop. And I knew her talent. I said, Jan, come help me in my studio. 
So every day that she could, she was there working, making these beautiful flowers. We were decorating cakes and candies and cupcakes and cookies all out of porcelain. Okay. Oh. And finding the right color glazes and, and that's color like, glazes to work that's a with. lot of work. <laughs> it was a lot of work, hundreds and hundreds of pieces. We even found furniture in the thrift store and, and refinished them and put padding on them, you know, to, to make it look like a cafe. And it did. People came in, pull out their wallets to buy chocolates. And, you know, I'm like, you know, these will bust your teeth. <laughs> we had to bring in some sweets so people didn't leave disappointed. So, you know, I did sell a few, but not very many. But the point was she was there. She worked the whole 17 days of the show. She is still here, cancer free. And she says, you know what? Doing that art, having something to look forward to every day, having something to, you know, hope for, to, to be around for the show, changed my life and mentally and emotionally. You know, maybe, maybe it had to do with her physical healing. Again, that's not quantifiable. Um, but the truth is she is living a quality life because she got, distracted through art <laughs> got well <laughs> right and it's interesting like mindset makes a difference if you're and i've read a, re a research on this recently where if your doctor tells you you have this but we're going to do this and it's going to cure you and you believe them then there's a good chance you'll be cured but if your doctor says you have this you're probably going to die unless you can can discount what that doctor has said to, to your subconscious, or unless you have an, another reason to stay, uh, like, um, you know, I need to see my grandchildren, so I'm going to make sure I get better for them, or something that will shift your mindset, you will probably pass away. And art is a huge way for people to get out of their crap and just play and have fun. And it is true. So I'm, I am left-handed. Born, <laughs> born left-handed, but I broke my left wrist. Ooh. My Frankenstein Ooh. scar. Ow. I still, I'm still working on my range of motion. But what did did I let that stop me? No. Guess what? My right hand <laughs> is doing great, and I've still been painting and writing. My handwriting is now. I say I'm now in about grade five. My right <laughs> hand is now in grade five. <laughs> but it's interesting. Like um, people will think this has happened to me it's over but your brain they used to say you know if you damage your brain that's it but now they're proving that no it's not that's not it your brain can just move things around it can just redecorate if part of your brain <laughs> is damaged it just says okay we're just going to move things around but you have to do it takes longer and you have to do some things to get those that brain muscle working so i think art doing that f f something physical like it doesn't have to be painting drawing sculpting maybe it's baking maybe, but something physical to help your brain rewire and get out of the my life sucks <laughs> world right yes you know and, and it doesn't take all day and a lot of people i'm too busy i can't anything 15 20 minutes depending on which study you read it's all it takes per day, just like even a stroll or um, other ways that you can be creative. People love coloring books. Why do you think they started with these adult coloring books? And even my mom, who who doesn't identify as a, as a creative, um, she she was working with her great grandchildren coloring. And she said, you know what? I see why this is this is relaxing. I, it works. And, and she has things she does on her computer because she has an iPhone and iWatch and iPad. She's really wired, my mom. <laughs> but yeah, she She's, she's really um, rocking and rolling it. And she said, I get it now, you know, because like, like the serotonin release, the reduction of cortisol, which we need cortisol, but too much of it is that stress related illness happens. And so I feel like we've got an abundance we in general. Abundance. <laughs> we need to release it and let that yeah. Calming happen for us that you know that's why met people enjoy meditation and certain things um, to to really bring us down from from ah high productivity whatever we're working on and just relax and enjoy uh, our lives and you know everybody has a, something creative they can do I believe it with all my heart because why do we have half a brain for creativity if it's not for everyone. And, and there's so many ways. And, and this is something that I specialize in helping my clients find their creative world. Or you remember loving to color and paint when you were a child, but you never 
got around to it. You did your left brain job, you raised your family, but now you'd really like to explore and see if you could get better. Um, it's, it's, really my expertise. My, my third book is how to paint, which I use in my court, my classes. And, you know, for me, when I shared my story about believing I couldn't paint, that I wasn't good enough, I really accepted that as, but I kept trying. And that's the thing. I started having babies. They were so cute. I wanted to paint them and I just couldn't get myself past this hump. And then I got a mentor. I got a man who'd been to the Chicago Art Institute, learned the fundamentals of how to paint, and he taught me. And those courses over the for a couple of years really changed my life because then I got, had what I needed to get past those stumbling blocks for me. And and uh, and there was no stopping me after that. <laughs> <laughs> so I know I know I can you know I have been helping people for many years and in you know this bent of of really kind of expanding and bringing in the wellness factor. Part of that is because I'm turning seventy and this month and really want to to help my at my generation that maybe has some brain fog or right. some some fears of AI that, you know, guess what side of the brain AI takes over the left. And if your whole world is left brain and it's time to start engaging your right brain because it will right. never, never replace right brain brilliance. I used Do to you, always say, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to no. I was just going to ask you, so you have a studio, but do you have online as well that you help people? <laughs> I do. You know, we all learned how to be online, right? <laughs> the last couple of years. We kind of jumped right into it. <laughs> we did. We said, okay, how do we do this? And I learned, you know, even through my college classes, how to teach art um, online. And I love it. I love this medium because it does open up the whole world to us, right? We're not limited to our local communities. Uh, of course, doing it in person, you know, having your hands on is, is always number one. But, um, you know, I teach classes where people are doing it while I'm, while I'm training and teaching and I have the, the you know, the slides to show them what to do. Um, and then they show me what they do and, you know, we work from there and I create what I call a no criticism zone. So right. this is because guess which side of the brain criticism comes from? right? It's a left brain, left brain thing. And it's, you know, people used to say, well, if you don't get criticism, you can't get better. But guess what the right brain does when it gets criticized? It shuts down, it gets wounded, it gets its feelings hurt. That's all um, from right brain. And so there are ways to encourage and teach and, and bring few people forward without tearing them down at the same time. It just doesn't right. make any sense. So this is a no criticism zone. It's safe to try new things, you know, to, to engage the right brain. We don't look at our paper. Like when I'm teaching drawing, you can't even look at your paper. So you are disengaging. I mean, you're still using utensils. So that's using your, your left brain. Cause the idea isn't to just shut down the the left brain, the idea is to create neural pathways connecting, like you were describing before. All these things come. Um, I used to describe my brain's more like a spider web than than <laughs> Adam with streets and avenues. You know, I it 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 just pulls things from all different different areas and not understanding. Well, that's that's how you that's what you happens when you develop your right side of your brain. But it's only catching up to our left. So we don't want to do without our left brains, but we want to connect them and give them. They can be friends. They can be friends. Absolutely. <laughs> Work together. That's the goal. <laughs> you need the creative and you need the accountant <laughs> to keep track. <laughs> Absolutely. So that the creative can keep buying new art supplies. <laughs> yes. Yes. And as I've been learning marketing, I realized that should be part of every art program or the theater or filmmaking program is the marketing marketing and sales because we don't ever get any of that. We have to do that on our own, figure out, okay, how do we make a living at this? How do we? And there are right. people that are really good at that so they can help us. <laughs> well, it, it is funny because one of the things I got, um, I did, my first degree was in accounting. So my first career was a CPA. And my feedback was, you got to teach people management skills, like people skills. You teach them all about the numbers. You don't teach them how to be a manager. Or how to market. I mean, exactly right. <laughs> and even when I was teaching at the, I was teaching at the Shiatsu school, Shiatsu students, I was teaching them how to run a business, but I had, I had one course with them to teach them how to market and run a business. <laughs> it's like, you'll come back to me after you graduate. Okay. No problem. <laughs> exactly. Right. 
And I think that, um, I think art is one of those things that people, as you say, in our school system, it's not taken all that seriously. The, the archetype of the starving artist, you know, artists are always <laughs> under, are never make any money. Although, you know, somebody made millions and millions of dollars on a big balloon dog, not going to name any names, <laughs> but it does. It's just because we are evaluating it from that like cut and dried black and white standard instead of uh, it doesn't have to fit into your boxes. We can find a way to do what we want. And as you say, if it brings you joy, then just let it bring you joy, right? Just let Absolutely. it bring you joy, whatever it is. Now, the other thing I wanted to ask you was a pop up podcast. And I don't know that anybody listening, they might know, but you can tell us what is what the heck's a pop up podcast? And <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for asking. Um, it's it's a, a marketing um, opportunity and a, and a further learning opportunity for your listeners. So it's three free episodes it, um, of more content on, you know, discovering your creativity, giving you more ideas on ways that you can be creative and some of the science behind it that I've, I've investigated and, and even ways to get a hold of me personally to work with you. And, you know, this this pop up podcast is um, for a limited time. Um, it, it's it's accessible through www.getcreativewithkaren.com, and that will give you um, the opportunity to listen to these uh, free podcasts, which is all material that is usually on my eight thousand dollar programs. And um, so this free material, and I just wanted to, you to have more opportunities to get your listeners. Uh, more more content and, and information about creativity. Well, and get your creative juices going, right? Um, it's never too early and it's never too late and it's never the wrong time. And <laughs> you never, everybody has the same number of hours in a day. It's how you choose to spend them. You know, I always think of it as like I have my wallet, <laughs> my wallet of hours for that day. And do I want to spend my my dollars, my, my time dollars on scrolling. No, I do not. <laughs> That's a waste of money. That's a waste of time currency. So I know sometimes, sometimes it's fun to watch cat videos, but um, <laughs> I'm becoming more mindful on how I spend my time currency That's and awesome. ideas for creativity. I'm always down for creative ideas because I binge watch art courses and my my art studio I think currently I have like six or seven different things happening that are all unrelated but you know it's like it's my groove it all works it all works. I do too you know we're always learning more always practicing more and I do, I do enjoy um sharing with with um people I have a Facebook on Facebook and Facebook group, but you know, it's, it's, um, a, a wonderful, you're, you're a podcaster. So you're already creative. You're creating content from nothing. You know, you, you found the people you're bringing them on. Um, you're promoting your, your podcast. This is, all, these are all wonderful right brain skills that you're obviously operating in. Um, paintings are fun. Drawing's fun. Uh, drawing, of course, is the foundation of all art. So I usually I'll start people with drawing and have ways to engage the right brain, but, you know, p just doing journaling, you know, that we haven't talked much about writing, but journaling, right. just not editing, just again, just laying down thoughts and getting yourself, um, giving yourself freedom to explore what does give you joy as Heather is describing. And, and those are, the, those are very valid experiences, especially, you know, as we get older, we're finding ways to experience the golden years and be golden, have, have really truly be golden for us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be platinum. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not? Yeah. And I just had a big commission last year that the painting I just finished and, and delivered Thanksgiving. So I, you know, before I went to see my 
grandbabies, but yeah. So that was, that was fun. And there's, there's people that will love to buy your work and there are opportunities for selling your work. If that's something you'd be interested in. Um, right. My sons are musicians. They went all the way to Germany to be, to be recorded and to find publishing and, and, yeah. and recording opportunities and also venues until of course COVID came and interrupted all that, but they've, fell in love and married beautiful German women and gave me beautiful grandbabies. And I love to go there because of the history and the beautiful buildings and so much right. art to see. So, you know, it's a great experience. And, you know, just looking at art also releases serotonin. So if you have galleries in your neighborhood or in your city or in your town, there's always art somewhere to look at because we're everywhere. Yeah, it is <laughs> and everywhere. Is unique. Just so, is unique. So, <laughs> and if people who are in Toronto, there's a thing called Graffiti Alley. Just go walk down the alley and it's got beautiful graffiti. I did a tour of it one day. It's got beautiful graffiti and it's just mm -hmm. so interesting and so varied. It's everywhere. Art is everywhere. <laughs> like music, it's everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> so yes, friends, don't worry. The All of the links for the pop-up podcast, for all of the ways to find Karen are going to be in the show notes because I know sometimes you're like, what was that? I missed it. Don't <laughs> worry. We type it all out for you. The other part of our brain types it all out for you so you can <laughs> grab it. Right? That's right. That's right. Keep those connections, those neuro pathways open. Keep them working. <laughs> and I feel like you've already shared a ton amount of tons and tons of really good things, but I always give my guests the, the last word for some final words of wisdom. My final word of wisdom is give yourself grace, give yourself freedom to try something new and fail because everything isn't wonderful that we do, but it's always beneficial. Just doing it is releasing serotonin, just the act of doing it, whether it's good, bad or indifferent, it doesn't have to be anything perfect to be, bring you joy. So do what brings you joy and then be gracious about it. <laughs> That's perfect. Yes. There are no mistakes, right? That's what Bob Ross said. There's That's no, right. Just happy, happy accidents. accidents. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Karen. It was such a pleasure talking with you. Oh my I goodness. feel like now I'm just going to go and get my sketchbook. <laughs> because yes. I haven't drawn yet this morning. <laughs> Thank you so I much. I have mine within hand reach everywhere. Right? <laughs> everywhere. I have stacks of them. But podcast friends, even if you don't like to draw, trust me, just doodle. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, right? Take care. Share mm -hmm. this episode with someone you know who just needs to be a little less logical. <laughs> I will see you next time.